Coming up on Talk is Cheap, we look at Nassim Haraman. This guy knows how to pull energy out of the vacuum, which is the space in between your molecules. Really interesting. Check it out next on Talk is Cheap. Talk is cheap, or cheap is talk, and talk is cheap. I'm Dan Holfeld, and I'm joined by... Theodore Christman. Yeah, Dusty Long. Welcome back for your Daily Dose Fix. Actually, it's bi-weekly fix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went daily by. Daily Dose, ho. Yeah, we went by. We went by. Yeah, yeah, we're all by. <laughs> I just gotta keep quit digging myself in a hole. <laughs> um, this, this, next, this article that I'm gonna do is... Uh, Sophie Morrison told us to look into this. She did, was the one that told us about the um, the guy with the ace, ace up his sleeve. What was his name? Ace <laughs> up his sleeve. That was your inside joke. He had those oh. pictures for the... Um, God, he worked in the Black Projects, and he was showing all these pictures, but he didn't have anything scanned. It was yep. just pointing them at the camera, holding them like that. She had this one on there, too, but I kind of ignored it for a little while, and then she came back and said, check this out again. Hey, damn it, do it. The reason I didn't do it because it's a six-hour lecture. Oh, oh, but I sat through the whole Holy thing. Holy, really? I sat through really? the whole thing and lost Holy. it. Holy, that's dedication. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I'm just gonna go over. Okay, the, this guy's name is Nassim Harriman. Ah, I think I said that right. Nassim, right here. Nassim Harriman. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, looks good. I like it. Uh here's a picture of him. He's happy. Decent looking guy. Yeah, that's not bad. He basically describes how. Everything is interconnected with each other, and it, we could actually maybe ha- use this as a future energy source. I'll go through a background, and then I'll go through his uh, lecture points. Okay. He was a theoretical physicist. He was born in uh, Geneva, Switzerland in 1962, and at nine years old, he was discovering universal dynamics of matter and energy, which led him to a Holy new approach and to quantum gravity, gravity and developments in unified theory. So at nine years old, he's already trying to get into this right? shit, you know? And I was doing it at nine years old, watching wrestling. <laughs> I was like Power Rangers Jumping or something, on trampolines. right? Yeah. <laughs> he's determ- he was determined to discover the basic building blocks of creation, and he's done a lo- lots of independent investigations to physics, geometry, chemistry, biology, consciousness, archaeology, and uh, religions around the world. So he's trying to get every like viewpoint mm-hmm. of how all this coincides with each other. And he's been doing lectures and seminars for 20 years. And in 2003, he founded uh, the Renaissance Project Foundation, and he leads a team of physicists, electrical engineers, mathematicians, scientists to explore unification principles and their implications. And he's also uh, going through a uh, what's um, Einstein's theory, unified theory, I believe yep. it is. Yeah, he's working on that. So what I'm about to talk about is basically his presentation. And I incorporated some of my thoughts into this. His theory uh, describes the structure and dynamics of what constitutes. This is, he, th- he says, 99.999999999999 of what we see out there is space. <laughs> no, not one more. <laughs> and according to science, it's like, the, it's not empty. It's, this is the vacuum. Mm-hmm. This is the, par- uh, and they say it's full of energy. And this is what's connecting everything to each other. And now to demonstrate this, let me bring up Pixelminator again. Dan really likes this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Are we timing this one too? <laughs> no, no time limit on this one, boys. All right, let's say you got like an atom or something or a yep. particle. Mm-hmm. We can take that and then we can divide it up. The pieces. You with me so far? Yep. So far, yeah. And then we can go in. And divide it up. And then we can go in. And divide that one. I think we could go in again and divide it up. But you I get the you picture, keep right? Going. Yeah. <laughs> you can keep going forever. It. Yeah, okay. And this is what he's called the space in between these mm-hmm. particles. That's what the vacuum. 
That's okay. that empty space that he's talking about. The ninety nine point nine 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 nine. All right. All right. So so, so it connects all things. Mm-hmm. And one way this is demonstrated, like if you took the cells from a person, like you took DNA from me, scraped it off, put it on the table, and I go somewhere else, and I get hurt or I'm in an accident, that DNA right there is going to show the so, a spike or something happening to me in a different location. So what does that mean? Was that like that quantum thing where you change two atoms could be at two different spots and then Same one change they change? Yeah. yeah. And then no, go ahead. But that's I, I've read that's quantum something. I just yeah. got done reading something about that. So that's kind of a little proof positive right there that there's something to that. His theory there. So is this kind of like well, the... Uh, cut the, off the, a finger and then we'll have an axe. We'll see what happens. There, is this kind of like that global consciousness is what he's kind of talking so. about? Yeah, we'll Which get is to interesting. Universal. Yeah, we'll I, get into that. Because I was just uh, reading something about a bunch of like 10,000 or 1,000 or 10,000 people were going to, I don't know, wherever ISIS is at right now, to meditate because of global consciousness that they they you know, there's this like spike mm-hmm. when there's violence and whatnot yeah. globally. Yeah. Yep. Well, these people are going to meditate there because it's been proven apparently that if a bunch of people get together and, and are thinking very calming thoughts or whatnot, that it'll actually drop the violence in that area. So hmm. there's a big social experiment that is going on. Actually, I think it's going on right now. I think they all went over there like February 2nd. I don't know how long they're going to stay, huh. but yeah. That'll be interesting to look into that. Right. So he's saying kind of the same thing. Basically, and then, um, so, okay, we're in a co-created reality. We, that medium, that vacuum, those, that space in between connects us all mm-hmm. to each other. So, if, if, um, so when we think of something, we're, in order for us to interpret that reality, it goes back out to you, and then you go back into the vacuum, comes back to me. So it's, it's a co-created reality. Mm-hmm. And I think this kind of, did you guys ever look into the law of attraction at all? Nope. No? Long time ago, <laughs> when I was in college. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of it? Yeah, I was just really attracted to this really hot blonde. No, that's that's something (laughs) different. A law of attraction is basically, if you think about something long enough, there will be stuff will start showing up in your life to take that opportunity. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that's how I think, like, if you're sending that thought to the vacuum, it's going to a vacuum. It's going to set up uh, rendezvous and appointments with people to make that reality happen for you. Mm -hmm. So my circumstances in my life, this is kind of my own thoughts, really created who is Dan Holfeld. The events that I had, the experiences that I've gone through created what I am today Mm -hmm. and you, vice versa. Think about if we had different events, it would change. You'd think differently, Mm -hmm. do things different. Have you ever had a dream where it was like so vivid and you experienced something like you woke up the next morning, you felt different. You felt like a different person just because of that. So my next thing that I was thinking, what if you go back and just change it in your mind doesn't that change who you are right now it would yeah of course because anytime you have a, an op uh, you know somebody has a different viewpoint and it changes your you know and you agree with it or some of it at least they'll change your viewpoint so it would be the same thing you know no matter what we're always we're constantly changing so yeah i could agree with you so for the energy side yeah, dan um you, you guys heard of breath arians right no. no. Are you kidding me? What the hell? <laughs> Breath Aryans? We're not as far down the rabbit hole. Yet. Hey! I'm still trying to climb out sometimes. <laughs> There's people that actually live just breathing. Oh, gee. I've, yeah. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah. I've, like they don't eat or anything? They yeah. don't know. They live off sunshine and, and good thoughts and, and wind. I'm not shitting. Like, that's what I, I've read that stuff. They don't eat. <laughs> I'm not think, a doctor, but. This is, but. But think about this. Maybe he's, they're pulling that energy from that vacuum. If you're channeling it right, I okay. I'm not going to disagree with you because you were in the Buddha. They got kind of Buddhism. They well, talk yeah. About this um, stuff, don't they? Before Buddha actually kind of founded Buddhism, he went to over where uh, oh, sh- where is it at? But what they do is they only live off of like one grain of rice and the dew off of a leaf. And you can count the ribs and everything of these people because they think the closest they are, the closer they are to death, the closer they are to God. And uh, Buddha actually went over there and tried it, and then he said. He don't. He didn't like it. So then he kind of took what off and, and founded Buddhism. But I can see what you're saying. Like that's what they were doing. They're right. trying. To, they were trying to be as close as they could to be to death because they figured right at that threshold between life and death is where you would. You're the closest to, right. you are to their their God. So I don't know if it's the same, but I want to stay here too. He goes. This lecture is. I just. I'm just pulling the basics out of it. But mm-hmm. he it goes into this stuff and you. It, he makes. He does mathematical equations, which I suck at math, so I didn't <laughs> yeah. pay attention to that. But <laughs> 
I encourage you to look at the the video you guys got put in the comments below or the show notes. Watch that because he goes through every little thing and it's like, well, yeah, I guess I'm not a mathematician, but if someone wants sense. to watch it, yeah, he didn't get many dislikes. Let's put it that way. On no shit, videos, yeah. So. so every single atom is extracting energy from that vacuum. And he's saying if we can even take a small part of this, we could actually power the planet like forever. Hmm. So well, how would that change society? There'd be no wars. That's you know, people wars. would be getting their shit together because we'd have free energy, basically. Right. So we wouldn't be fighting for, for oil that. anymore and oh, yeah. stuff like that. That's so there's still religion. No way be fighting over that. <laughs> yeah, Maybe we just <laughs> give up on religion. <laughs> I was thinking, this, these are my thoughts. Maybe Nikola Tesla found a way to tap into that. Didn't he have that right. rod or whatever you stick into the ground? Yep. He did. Have, he want free energy. It was through a, the the Tesla coil, though. Okay. Because so he was going to beam energy using... He like, could even do wirelessly, too. Yep. Energy. Also, he was going to put it into the ground, and then I'll... I heard something about getting it from the ground, from the earth. That he, I've read something about that. I don't know if it was Tesla, but I did read mm-hmm. something about that where they were trying to, like... Grab the uh, the electricity out of the ground, or yeah. you know, even harnessing lightning bolts and stuff like this oh, yeah. to power, power stuff. I almost don't. wonder if that would be coming from that vacuum, part. right? Uh, then he talks about the pyramids, how they were using that. Ended up, you got the pinnacle point. Maybe mm-hmm. they're trying to channel the oh the energy, yeah. Which yeah, a lot I've of people that. do I've believe that, that. Yeah, the yeah. pyramids were a, an energy source and, anyway. And they're yep. built with such precision. You know, we know the fucking ropes and slaves things. Bunk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I think bullshit. it's bullshit. Yeah, it's too perfect. So this is a picture of what he's saying. After he did all the mathematical equations, this is what it looks like for the, the vacuum, of what it looks like. This reminds me of sacred geometry. It looks like an everlasting gobstopper it's a from Willy six, Wonka. 64 tetrahedron. And if you shine... Damn. If it, the light's uh, coming from the top down at it, that's what okay. the uh, looks like. Like that, obviously. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. And then one of the, in the Egypt, this is etched into the stone, or not not etched. I got to correct myself because I keep saying that. It wasn't etched. It wasn't uh, drawn. This is burned into the stone. No shit. Impressive. And then here's one the from. The only way you can burn into stone, wouldn't that be lasers? Call us the burn into yeah. stone, yeah. That's the thing. They might have had an alien technology that helped them with the pyramids. Oh, yeah. And all that stuff. And then, you know, this is where it gets into the other part. Well, here's a Chinese ball, by the way. This has the same design on it. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Maybe, like, the ETs and stuff, they're supposed to be in crop circles, he says, too, as well. That they're, This is the thing. We, we're getting so advanced now that we're supposed to figure this stuff out and get the free right. energy. Because they're, they're trying to, like... Tell you, but not tell you, tell you, but they're putting it there in the yeah. Oh, they're just like giving you clues, and when the the further we advance as a human race, and the smarter we become, then we can figure out these clues more right. and more, and then have yeah, it. Because at the then, end. by then, we should be space ready mm. and not fighting with each other. To well, space war. exploration would be huge if we had free energy. If we could oh, harness yeah. that, we could travel right. anywhere we wanted to. But I think in order for any before any society can be ready to go out there we need to be able to not start wars out of i agree oh absolutely yeah. we're not ready for it that's why i don't think aliens are here exactly like, like, these fucked up yeah, people right. Ooh, go down there. let's think about what's going on right we'll now see the monkeys so- in the cage <laughs> society we're we're gaining knowledge i would say a lot quicker than we did mm-hmm. yeah everything's i mean if we were talking if we had talk as cheap on 50 years ago people would call us kooks now it's pretty much a norm Right. Yeah, uh, there's quite a few people that think the way we do. So everybody's asking questions. In summary here, that means like with this vacuum, everything is within us. Mm-hmm. When you meditate and go in, you're mm-hmm. connected to everything. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes that so powerful because when you're looking out in three-dimensional space, you're just limited to what you yeah. can perceive. Which is interesting because my, the mantra I repeat when I meditate is, I change my thoughts, I change my world. It's mm-hmm. my favorite thing to say. It's, it's a simple one, but it's the one I always go back to. So true. Because I'll sit there and meditate and I'll constantly say, if I change my thoughts, I change my world. And because what that's, that's really perfect. interesting yeah. is the same thing. Yep. You know, if, is, if I think differently, then my world will be different. Yeah. You know? It's all and perspective. Even, it really is. And even, um, you know, not to sound you know, overly religious or a zealot or anything, but you know, like, when I'm done meditating, especially if it's a good like 30-minute session or something, it just seems like colors pop more and the sun is a little bit shiny. And I mean, there's just that, that little... Plus, you know, the breathing exercises definitely help. You know. More stress. Yep. So I don't know. I, I, I can agree with this. And the uh, thing I was going to say, does anyone know the golden ratio? Okay, golden so ratio? The golden ratio. It's a, 
I know Horatio Cain. 32 or something. But anyway, the golden ratio is a ratio found all over in, in nature, um, everywhere. And it, that's what I was proving, that the pyramids were, were not just carved by man because they have those perfect curves, these perfect circles and everything else. And the sacred geometry is pretty much the same thing. Um, if you do a little bit of research into like sacred geometry, it all looks the same way, which is kind of interesting because I didn't know. like Everything you just covered was like, great and kind of gave a little bit more credence to what these people are talking about when they talk about the golden ratio and, mm. and sacred geometry. It's pretty interesting. I love how that looks all like weird, but like, then the bottom side of it with a light. Yeah, he says these their scientists and shit are actually doing experiments to figure this stuff out but this lecture was 2010 so i mean does he have any other reports or any anything he's else got lately? that website yeah this Where's is his he's probably. got this foundation and shit and it looks pretty again there's the vacuum particle oh wow but yeah you can actually get involved and really yeah. That's kind of cool. I mean, I'm gonna I check to this out. This yeah, there's I'm a lot. I'm very of, intrigued. A lot of like, look at all these thumbs ups. And he goes, like I said, he goes through these mathematical equations, which, if you can follow it, go for it. But right, no, no I'm not really. It didn't do much for me. <laughs> I can't do that. I don't. Know, I, I love physics. I could. That's the uh, only math class. Well, it's a science, I guess, but it's the only class that I could do math in really well was physics because it made sense, and geometry made sense because it shapes. But I right, couldn't right, do. Yeah. Couldn't do algebra no, to save my damn I life. No, me. I sucked ass at algebra. And I'll be honest, I still can't do fractions very well. I don't you know, I mean, just like the basic foundation of fractions, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then you start going crazy, and I'm like, no, I'm done. Especially yeah, when it's... you put that in algebra with a bunch of fractions, oh, it's like, God. Oh. and that is a fraction <laughs> of itself on top of another fraction. It's like, oh, I'm so tired. I'm it, done. I was like, forget they, it. <laughs> yeah, as soon as I threw X and Y, yep. like, letters stay in English, you assholes. All right, mm -hmm. don't put them in my math. I, I failed at algebra. I had to have people. What was that? What was that other equation we had with? That, oh, what was his name? God dang it! Like the, the guy that for the time travel equation. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I guess I can't remember. It but was anyway. a frequency over something. Yeah, yeah. frequency over time yeah. equals something. <laughs> it was a little yeah. T, yeah, it was it was a simple equation, but it, it's like oh, yeah, whatever. But that's where you deal with frequency again. And then, yep. yep. So if you think about it, change your frequency, you change your life. It's true, and you know it's right. funny that uh, that stone you had on a while back, the the crystal, that yep, the uh, clear one that you have. Yeah, I just read that those things are you know, like are they're no, neither solid nor liquid. Liquid, and they're because they moving. resonate at yeah, such a resonate. level. Oh, really? Yeah, yep. they're actually always resonating. Apparently, yeah. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's pretty interesting. That's like why I, a lot of theor like theorists too also put that with time travel is uh, quartz, right? Yeah, yep. yeah, quartz. quartz is for Clear time quartz, travel. Yep. yep. Because you can meditate, you know, you can... That's where they got it from Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> Time travel crystals. I loved it because he was like, turn it off. And his brother's like, eh. <laughs> Kill it. Kill it. <laughs> I love that movie. God, I haven't watched that in so long. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for joining us. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you, Sophie, for the topic. That was very interesting, and it really changed my outlook a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, the whole frequency thing, I think, is just that much more. you got to look into this stuff. So, Absolutely. See you in two weeks. Jesus, whose phone is not on silent? Hey, Dusty, here we go. I hope this is the right school. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Coming up on Talk is Cheap, we look at Nassim Harriman. Damn it! <laughs> I've seen a hairy man. <laughs> I've seen a hairy man. <laughs> I like... <laughs> Unless, of course, we ever took these out in the woods and did some fucking special app shit. Andy's coming in. Andy. <laughs> what? I said shoot the motherfucker! <laughs> right? He came he in like, like a wrecking ball. ball! We can fill the... Are you falling asleep, TC? <laughs> I'll be taking out What the hell were you looking at over here, so too?